All right, welcome back to The Existential Way. My name is Kevin Meredith. Today we're talking about how authentic is your love. And it's important because I've been listening to another TI who's podcasting by the name of Steph Price. And he, like me, he really got over the cultural norms of the New Age. And, and it, he, we were never in it, but we really see it for what it is. It really is this false agenda which gives a safe place, if you will, for false selves. And so, in understanding that the love that they exist with it really is this denatured, false, one-sided love of self and not true existence to the protection of humanity, if you will. We have this idea where it's kind of like, yeah, don't, you know, don't infringe upon how I feel, you know, this, and really... They don't want to be hampered with any ne notions of negativity, any, any true existential crisis in their life, anything that um, seems negative to them. And really what it is, and, I, and I've seen this, because they, they attempt and they project to be all about light and all about truth and all about love and all about humanity. But in fact, I myself, when seeing the New Age type, I'm really seeing a, a, a source of light which is an odd spirit, a different spirit. It's a spirit that doesn't want to look at the reality of what's, what humanity is going through, especially when it comes to things in this reality, in this carnality. We have human trafficking, we have, you know child abduction, child sacrifice, we have human experiment, experimentation, we have um, the human genome in a huge spiritual war right now, the, 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 the hybridization program, the, you know, and what it seems like is, is the spirit that, that this false attempt of one-sided love, the projection of it, is coming from a place and coming from a spirit that does not have humanity's best interest. And so what we're seeing is half of the coin being played out. You know, the, and you hear it from these types. I, it's like their attempts and their projection to be all about love and be light and be truth, um, is there any merit to it? And the question is, 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 is with their affirmations and their repetitive, um, you know, affirmations to, to who they are, are they really that? And, and my answer is no, they're not really that. There really is no existing testimony. There has to be, not in the sense, a duality that's necessarily kept like, like there, there doesn't have to be negativity which leads to positivity. But there does have to be an existence of that individual to test his or her qualification to what one is projecting, you know. And really, this, and it's so unfortunate because... They're like, oh, don't say anything negative to me. Uh, I can't anything that anything that's real, anything that is is truly, you know, if it's if it has to do with the suffering of humanity. Like, I want to hear somebody say something about this from this community, this type, and really, it's not there because this is a this is an infiltrated community. You know, there's no there's no existing testimony. There's nothing made alive. If you if you step on their toes, um, and you offend them, you happen to offend them from a true place of, of honesty, a true place of human existence, uh, a true place of human concern before um, spiritual concern. 
um, what we're seeing is a telltale sign that the spiritual source that they are projecting with does not have humanity's best interests in mind. It, it's more of, a, of, it has the best interests of the false self of the individual, the place of selfishness, the place of um, not wanting to be infringed upon, you know, um, not wanting the play, not wanting questions to be asked, but only wanting to give um, to those questioning uh, um, specific entitled answers, uh, answers that are that are rote, that are that are fixed to this belief type of the new age, and so. That's one thing I've been noticing is Steph Price has been kind of talking about how they they have their verbal they verbalize the language of, of, of the secondary language of it but but there's no existing testimony in them which suggests to me that they're very false you know because he was talking about admitting admitting that you're a failure to the universe, admitting the things that they would deem negative, they would find offensive. Admit Because what's happening is nothing they're really projecting is coming true. They, they've been infiltrated by an odd spirit, uh, and, and that agenda has. So the, the, the universe has a way of balancing itself. And, and really what I want to comment, you know, I kind of want to commentate on that is that repentance involves... You're, you're admitting failure before the universal creator. And then the universe and or the creator will balance, will bring you up, will lift you out of that. It's not something that, that needs to be verbalized, as Steph had said. And this is a community whose language is so important. And it's really, it's the language not just of the New Age agenda. It's the, it's the language of the New World Order, you know. It, it, it mimics that. There's no existence to it. There's no, there's no truth in spirit to that. There's no, you know, it's not in truth and spirit. It's it's a very self-serving mechanism of pro, of false protectionism to whatever spirit has gotten into that community or that individual of that community. And so it's very it's selfishness. It's 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 leaning on the works of the flesh, and it, and it's there's no depth to something that that is adamant about language, you know. Has there been a struggle uh, that has ha, has brought you appreciation for the existence that you have in being love, or are all you doing is projecting the language of love? And that's what I, I see is is you can project this language of love, but unless your existence is, is testimony of that, um, it's gone with the wind, and, and and nobody takes it seriously, you know. And so the lives that we've been given right now, in the state that we're in. I think we would do better in admitting to our universal creator that we're failures. You know, we're, we've, you know, I myself, I'm, a, I'm, I'm attempting to be the most successful failure in the world to, to the world. You know, but you have to. It's, 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 it's a place of okay, truly and humbly admit you are a failure to the world. You are a failure to the universe. You are a failure to our universal creator. You are a failure to God. And he's going to lift you up. So, it, and this is the thing: is people, people with a true testimony of love, of existing as love. See, when you're existing as love, a, a trial has been had, a testimony has been brought about in that individual's life. There is sub, there is substance to this conscious person that we know as a being. There is a, there, there is spirit and truth. There is a witness of the eternal in this person. Uh, the lights are on and someone is home. You know? But we have to come to a place where repentance requires you to admit that you're a failure. And your attempt is to fail yourself so that you can be lifted up out of it. So, it doesn't require language. When someone is truly of the substance and the existence of being love, and I'm just using love in it as an example, and light, we'll say, and truth. When someone is truly of this nature, language and, 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 and strict guideline to, 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 to 
verbalizing language, it doesn't even really need to be said because the existence thereof is weightier than, than the outline, than, than the verbalization of it. And so you have a community which um, very selfishly s sticks to guidelines that, that verbalizes language. And, if you, and since there's no existence to it, there was never any testing or trial to such individuals that make up the group, they're easily offended. They're, all, they're, they're in offense to, to someone of true existence coming in and being that, because when they see, and, and that's because the spirit that's in this community and, and in the individuals of, of these communities is a different spirit, is, is not a human spirit, is not the Holy Spirit. And see, the Holy Spirit wants the best interest for the human being. It's not an odd spirit that wants the best interest of, of the flesh and the false self. The fall, see that, and that odd spirit wants the the. It, it's a selfish spirit, and it wants the interest of, of the fallen flesh. And so there is offense, and you see these people, these these light workers. They're not real. They're not. They're. It's like the attempts of who they are are are, are more or less manifestations of the odd spirits that are in them, but. And the lights might seem like they're on, but there's really no one home. And, and that's where the offense is taken. When someone's home and the lights are on, and then, then that individual approaches uh, someone where the lights seem like they're on, but there's no one home, the offense is coming from, from a spiritual state. It's coming from a, uh, two separate spiritual dimensions, one of the eternal um, and the one from a lower vibration is 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 in offense of the one from the eternal and so the one in offense has to set up guidelines and, and shallow uh, uh, behavioral mechanisms in order to be a part of that group by you know verbal you know verbalizing a specific language to be a part because that's how shallow and and, and selfish this agenda is towards false self False light is going to give credence to false self. And, and, and true life is going to give credence to true self. And so, we're at this point of... Are you projecting one-sided love? Because when you... when we, It's usually a thing of, of verbalizing when you're... Pro, you know, I say I'm, I'm projecting... Uh, I'm saying that I'm love, but I'm projecting it through verbalizing it. You know, now if I didn't say it and I showed it to you that... I was loved through my very existence, my behavior, my actions, my, you know, I, and I never said it and you saw it, then you would see the difference, you know, you would see the difference. And so we're here today is understanding that we have to once again be aware of the, the, the conditioned limits that have been set upon um, the unconditional lives that God would have for us. But it does take our part. We have to first person involve ourselves into a climate that doesn't require that, that actually looks down on that. Uh, we have to, and, and see what it is, is we, we, we enter cl a climate that it doesn't require the human spirit anymore. The human spirit has been inoculated. It has been vaccined. <laughs> in a way, it has been sterilized, <laughs> and um, that's what the world accepts. And that's and then you'll see the shallow subtleties of the false self come about in these communities, trying to project as if they are love, in which all they are is projecting uh, love from its most false sense and, and love from a from an odd spirit. It's not the spirit of, of truth at all, you know. And so that. That, that spirit, that odd spirit, that false spirit is driving the vehicle of that vessel, you know, and it's, and what it's doing is it's, 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 it's making the outside look all pretty, but the inside is, it, it, it is all deceit and ugliness, you know. And so that's the opposite of who we should be, though. When you're when you're when you're desiring the pursuit of that unconditional life, uh, as Christ says, once the cup is clean on the inside, everything on the outside it essentially takes its rightful place. It is cleaned, you know. And so, 
that's what I kind of wanted to focus on in this is seeing that just because you re, you know try to repeat positive affirmations is there are you really of that substance through your experience though and is it really lifting you up out or are you becoming uh, more hardened and cold of an individual due to the fact that um, reality is not really part of that equation for your life and and unfortunately we are in a place where we have people who who parade around singing la di da while the human genome is being messed with it's being hybridized it's being kidnapped it's being tortured uh we're be we're being eaten in underground laboratories all over the world um we are cannon fodder for the for the uh, you know, all fu all future wars, essentially, and, and we're being used, you know, we're being trafficked, and I wonder if a new age is going to, a new age type's ever going to even, even project a worry about the human, the, the future of human existence, you know, and that's where they find defense, though, usually when you mention, okay, what are you doing to actually help humanity, you know, before helping self? You know, and, and and don't get me wrong, you might be an empath, you might be one who truly loves other people. And in this sense, I would, I would ask you, you know, just as Kierkegaard says, don't forget to love yourself. Because a lot of the time, these false, these false pretenders, they love absorbing your energy. Because the spirit in them wants your energy. They need you. You don't need them. So, in the process, you give and give and give without accepting to receive, and they happily take, 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 you know? So, as Kierkegaard says, don't forget to love yourself. I have that bit of advice for you, but know that what is your, you know, what is, what is the qualification of love to your existence? <clears throat> that, is it at the heart of who you are, or are you, are you simply, 